Howdy everyone and welcome to another video with me. I'm Nick and this is London Creative. Branded to the hilt. So I haven't got a t-shirt on. What's the t-shirt? Anyone? Come on. <clears throat> no? Okay. Well, a few weeks, months back, I did a video on my favourite art books. But it got me thinking, what about books in general? Today, I'm going to just have a little run through some of my favourite books. Of course, you just stack of books all around me. And so I'm going to just tell you what things I actually like and what I've read and what I think of certain things. So, as you know, I'm a bit of a writer myself. I've produced two books which are available on Kindle and links are below. Licorice Box is a contemporary novel about a photographer and his life and him meeting someone and how his life changes. It's semi-autobiographical, it's partly based on my life and my history and so forth. Still love it. Issy Sinclair is weird. This was written in three months as a birthday present for one of my friends. It isn't meant to be taken seriously. It is a space opera with some severely weird alien stuff going on it that's very definitely, as you can tell by the cover, an adult book. I have another series of books written based on alien world, fantasy, sci-fi crossover, and I'm trying to get that published. If you've seen my videos on getting an agent, etc, you'll understand that. And I'm currently working on book number eight, which is a contemporary book about a schoolgirl who discovers a love of music and J-rock and K-pop, etc. So keep them busy. But I also read quite a bit. At school, I hated reading. I loathed it. If ever we got a reading assignment, read of a chapter, it would be like, no, I couldn't do it. No, it was just, it was pain. It turns out, in later life I've discovered, I'm dyslexic. So when I read a sentence that reads something like this, I read a sentence and it reads something like this. This read, that sentence, this, the words jump around on the page. It was all, why it was always a problem. So. I still struggle, still have a problem with it. I'm a very slow reader. So when you come to a book like this, well, the first time I read this, I was 15 and it probably took me the best part of a year. It's got to be said, the, the writing is pretty small. And it was lent to me by a friend at ice skating who said it was the best book he's ever read. And the author has a bad name and a bad rap because he went on to write something else and Former religion. Yes, L. Ron Hubbard, Battlefield Earth. Now you'll notice my cover has taped off the front because the picture on the front does not do the character justice. This is a big, beefy, brawny, muscular guy. And when Johnny B. Good starts off at the very beginning, he's a scrawny, weak little creature. It's all a bit confusing having that on the cover and so But this is a great book and Frank at Ice Skating was right all those many years ago. It got made into a film with John Travolta and it was absolutely abysmal and because it's L. Ron Hubbard nobody will read it because... But I've read this three times now. Man, said Turl, is an endangered species. The hairy paws of the Chanko brothers hung suspended of the broad keys of the laser bash game. The cliffs of Char's eyebrows drew down over his yellow orbs as he looked up in mystery. Weird. Set in the future where Earth has been taken over by a mining corporation. It just goes into one. It's well worth it. Next up, let's go classic. This is the only classic book I've ever read. And once again, I've read it more than once. Jane Eyre. I can't get on with Pride and Prejudice and Mansfield Park and even things like that. Around the World in 80 Days and 40,000 Leagues Under Sea, 20,000 Leagues Under Sea even. So, oh, Papa, one does like to have tea in the afternoon, doesn't one? It's all far too snooty and too slow. This, however, has something. It's a lot more intriguing from the start. But yes, Jane Eyre. Next up, having fought my way through Battlefield Earth, I eventually got onto this, The Mists of Avalon by Mariam Zimmer Bradley. This, basically, the best way to describe this book is, it's about King Arthur's sister, Morgana Le Fay, and the sisters of the Isle of Avalon. Arthur goes to war, comes back 10 years later. In the meantime, a lot of stuff happens, and this is all about it. It's about Fay and the mysteries of pagan 
England just after the Roman Empire was fallen and leaving a country in pieces and a king going off to fight and bring them all together and he didn't do it alone he did it with the help of a fair few women of quite powerful and mystical abilities. I got about halfway through and then had to write notes down to keep up with it because once again it took me so long to read and once again maybe it's more writing. If you like an involved book Neuromancer by William Gibson, the father of cyberpunk and this whole sort of new genre, the idea of cybernetic implants and people having neural links stuffed into the back of their head. Keanu Reeves was in a film which was based on this. Basically a jack plugged into the back of his head and you would be a courier for information. I love this book and once again I've read this more than once. This is You'll know that if it's a good book, I've read it more than once. This I read a little while ago, a couple of years back. If you know any of my Instagram pictures and so forth, if you follow me, um, you'll know that I'm still very influenced by it. Recent posts. It's kind of on something I'm reading at the moment, but still there's a lot of neuromancy in there. What's next? Let's do this. Deep Quarry by John E. Stith. John E. Stith. It's a bad name. Deep Quarry is about a detective on an alien planet trying to work out a murder. It's a proper film noir vibe to it, but set in the future on an alien planet with people with one eye and things. It's really cool. The only thing is the end has given us the famous spherical sphere. In the penultimate chapter, I'm not going to find it, they run around inside a spherical ship and everything in the spherical ship is spherical. The spherical sphere is the spherical ship and the spherical spiral staircase is spherical and it's ball-like. He does use other words but spherical sphere is a prominent thing. We have a real problem with people using one word repetitively and using it ten times in a sentence but it was good. And his other books, Manhattan Transfer, is really good as well. Recommended. Try and go through these quick. Okay, I'm just grabbing books randomly now. Robin Hobb, the Live Ship Trilogy. The Live Ship Trilogy is basically a world where it's sort of medieval ships sailing by sail and wind, but their ships have mastheads that are from trees that live, and when they're carved, the head of the ship comes alive and the boat takes on a life of its own but one ship like has gone crazy and sort of the mad ship and it's about slavery and commerce and piracy and it's really involved really clever and really good okay ah. now i should come to these before i go on to anything else this was another charity shop find i remember i found this and George R. R. Martin's Book of Fire and Ice. Kristen Catherine Roosh, the, the Fae, and this is The Sacrifice. Based on an island called Blue Isle, which is practically impenetrable unless you know the way to weave through these sharp, spiky stones, has remained uninvaded for centuries. And then there's the Fae. The Fae are tall, skinny, fairy-like creatures, many different types, really influenced me when I was doing my Crawl Fae books and photos, etc., in my photo series. The Fae have separate powers, so there are wisps, there are wind sprites, there are sea sprites, there are red caps who cut dead up and use them. There, there's all manner of different things. This book Brilliant, I loved it. I could not get enough of it. I even paid £29 for that copy of that book on eBay because it was not in print. It is signed by Catherine Roosh and I think I bought this directly off of her on eBay. And she was a really nice person. She really helped me get a copy of this book. It's now just available on Kindle and it's everywhere. But we reread it last year or the year before, Tora and I, and as I say, we got to there and we gave up. 34 chapters in, nothing happened. It proves how I progressed and learned to read and learned to see how plot lines go because this uh, 18 was like a revelation. It was brilliant. Two years ago, I read it and pretty much gave up on it. Nothing happens. It takes so long and it literally, you read a chapter, you go on to somebody else, you come back and the person that was walking down the stairs is still walking down the stairs. We read it, it ruined it for me. If you've read it, tell me what you think. To any of these books, tell me what you think. If you've read that, definitely want it for you. Do you find it the same? What's next? Let's go. Man in the High Castle by 
Philip K. Dick. Obviously, Philip K. Dick is famous for Blade Runner, or Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, as well as Minority Report and other books that have been turned into films, and most of them are pretty good. Really intense. His ideas and his concepts are great. My problem with it, they kind of muddy down after a while, and it has this great idea to start with, and then it gradually fizzles, and it gets tied up in the minutiae of details and things, which are great to start with, but then they just become repetitive. I've never read a Philip K. Dick book flown for it. I've, I've got to like there and then start to slow down and then drag. So when people make them into films and things, they're brilliant because it's concertinas, you know, stretches bits out and, and squishes other bits in. But Man in High Castle, very good. Would read Our Friends from Folox 8 and Down to a Dream. That's good. I've got the entire big set, but it's a big book. Like, you know. Should we do this? When my niece was 10 or 11 or something, she went to book fair and wanted to buy book three of Harry Potter and we didn't even know what it was. It had been out, people were saying in school it was really good and whatever. So I, I bought book one for her. We got home, put her into bed and I sat down and read the first chapter. I then read the entire book that night and was like, oh, this is so good. I read it and then I subsequently read all of the Harry Potter books to my niece and nephews and when the first book came out we went to the cinema and watched it and we sat down in the cinema all sat back like this when the screen comes up and uncle vernon comes on the screen starts talking and my nephew tugged my sleeve going what he went, the voices are wrong it's like what do you mean when they don't have the right voices he didn't have my voice all of the characters in the book had voices i'd given every single character a voice the only voice they got right is Agrid. Because Alfred talked like that, man, you're a wizard, Harry. That's Hagrid's voice. I hated Dobby because Dobby's voice used to drive me crazy. And it was, I don't know if I can do it now because my voice is dry. Harry Potter mustn't return to Hogwarts, not if he wants to live. You do that with the House Elf Liberation front. Oh, God, my voice used to be, and I really hated it. I thought it was just going to be a random little character at the beginning. And that was it. I didn't realise it was going to be a major character all the way through the book. So I was stuck with it. I kind of did a, a Castiel, you know, Misha Collins in Supernatural. Put on this voice thinking it was just going to be a bit part. It turned out five years later, ten years later, he's one of the major characters. And so he had this husky voice and this weird thing. He doesn't speak like that. And yes, so all of the characters, every single character had to have a voice. Every single person had to be acted out. We drew pictures, we, we acted scenes out. There was, Harry Potter pretty much took over my family's life and it's covered in dust. <sighs> I do see the thing that it's all far too black and white and it is also Tom Brown's School Days updated. I read Tom Brown's School Days to see and yeah, Tom Brown is a good little boy and there's this nasty little boy who's a bully in his school and whatever. But it's got magic. It's cool. <sighs> Don't say any more really. That was enough. Another random. Another love, Michael Weaver's Mercedes Knight. Mercedes is a vid prompt star. She's an adult entertainer as well, and she's famous. Someone makes a clone of her. Then she ends up all over the place. Really well done. I've never heard anything else by Michael Weaver. This has been read, I don't know, four times? One I don't have a physical copy of, it's on the iPad. Cinder, Marissa Mayer's retelling, reworking of classic fairy tales. Cinderella. Sleeping Beauty, Red Riding Hood, whatever else. Really, really good. Amazing books. Brilliant. I really love them. And I've completely fell in love with one character, Ico, the android. It, ever since, it's just androids are called Ico. And she had this sort of South African accent. And now it's then. You know, I must sit and. Victoria Aveyard, Red Queen, that whole series, that was really good. They're, they're my virtual books. Slight change. Justin Gorda. I have to say that because yeah, it's Norwegian and everything is Justin Gorda. Yay! No way. Mm. Sorry. My friends, when I was taking photos of ballet dancers, were mostly Norwegians or Japanese. And the Norwegians got me speaking some Norwegian. Jeg kan forstå det hvis der snakker langsomt. Hvis der snakker fort, jeg kan forstå det ikke. And this is in English. Yosun Go is a philosophy teacher in Oslo University and he wrote this book 
to condense four years of philosophy into one or two. And it's about a little girl that goes home one day and finds a package in her letterbox and it's from a mysterious writer who tries to teach her about philosophy. It's designed to catch first year students up. It kind of like the Philip K. Dick books. The analogy I came up with, you're in a forest and you come to a path and it's just really boggy. And you've got two choices, you can try and skirt around the outside or you can just go for it, get muddy and run and hope that you get to the other side of the mud before it drags you down and then you get stuck. In the end, you're like, <clears throat> one step at a time, pulling yourself through, doing the, I've only got a couple of chapters to go. It's just heavy, muddy. I tried to read in one of his other books and got about two chapters in and gave up. Let's do this. Jim Morrison was married to two women probably at the same time. One of them is documented in the Doors movie. The other one wrote this book, Patricia Kennelly Morrison, old hippie sort of thing. And she wrote The Copper Crown. And if there's a book that's influenced me in my writing, it's this. It's fantasy sci-fi. It's about a world that exists behind a curtain so no one sees it and accidentally a ship flies into it. And then they discover that a the world is sort of far, far, far in the future, but so far in the future that weapons of mass destruction have been banned and all fights and that are fought in person on horseback and with swords and like Clash of Kings, you know, like Richard V, Henry V, Richard V, Henry V, once more on the breach, dear friend, that sort of thing, but with laser swords rather than steel swords. Really clever, as I said, very influential on my fantasy sci-fi series that hopefully one day you might get to read. Or get published first. <sighs> Talking of biographies, once again, I don't have to hand the autobiography of Stephen Fry. My wash pot is my Moab. I've never understood what the what that means. I still don't know if you understand. Please tell me, because I don't understand what that means. And then the Fry Chronicles. I think there's a third out now which I've not read. Hilarious, incredibly insightful, incredibly clever guy. He's one of my inspirations and things. Just that book is brilliant. Other biographies, Billy Connolly. I don't think I've laughed out loud so much reading a book. It's written by Pamela Stevenson, wife, ex-wife, whatever. It's got photos and things and it's fascinating. It's a really great book. A Splendid Chaos by John Shirley. This is weird. This is, a, this is where this came from. This, this wouldn't have happened without this. So be warned, that's weird. A guy walks into a tent in the middle of an intersection yeah, and gets transported to another world where people's biggest desires come to reality. So there's lots of very tall, hugely muscly guys with big <coughs> hanging around that are completely stupid. There's angels, there's, there's weird, it's very weird. It's very surreal and very creepy and Got to be read again. I've added this in as a last book. It is completely fallen apart. A completely different book. It's not necessarily read, but this is my sandstone guidebook from like the 1980s. It's now like that thick and been updated and all that. But this is pretty much my climbing guide. You can see it's literally added so many routes to it. And where there was routes, I climbed in between and wrote in and named things and all my abilities all my climbs mostly at Harrison Rock in uh, just outside Sandwich Wells but this is see, it's fallen apart I've lost the back cover there are other books there's Peak District books and Cheedale books and I've got a Gogarth book I even though I only climbed there once it was scary that was really high but yes my Southern Sandstone Guide by Dave Turner Climbers Club Edition I won't get rid of it because it's got so much history in it. And that's spell it. That's what, 20 books or so. 20 books for you to get on with. And of course, don't forget these two. Both available in hardback or on Kindle. And links below. I hope this was um, informative, educational, funny, you know, all of those sort of things. And if it was, and you liked this video and you think I did okay, please give this a thumbs up down there and leave me comments tell me your favorite books tell me if you've read any of these 
if you've read anything else by the authors that I should read and if you know somebody that likes to read and likes sci-fi fantasies and biographies and climbing guides then share it click the share button send it to someone tweet it instagram it stick it on your pinterest and then they'll tell youtube that this was a good video and i might get seen by people if you're seeing this and you've not subscribed please hit the subscribe button and come back each week for more being in london being creative so that's it and come back next week for something different text message comma than an end one or the other